Okay, so today we are going to do a review on this tomato plant right here. And that is called the Wild Hairy Tomato. And this tomato, what you're looking at here, from all the way over there, all the way over to there, and growing, is one tomato plant. This is one plant. I'm not sure if I can actually show you how big this thing is. This is one tomato plant right there. Okay, and this is called the wild hairy tomato. So let me show you. Oh, there's a little moth on there. Probably plant some kind of nasty eggs on there. Anyway, this is the leaf. This is what it looks like. And as you can see, it's um, it's got like a glossy finish to it. The leaves curl a little bit when it's been really hot and super hot and cooking. and So they do get a little curl. That's not a disease. That's just... Uh, what they get but as you can see there's like a little shine to the leaves this plant is very very sensitive to growing under conditions like anything above it it needs to be in direct sunlight if it grows under anything other than direct sunlight then a plant gets edema very easily and edema is basically a condition where the plant can't transpire correctly and it's taking up more moisture than it can release through the leaves and when that happens the leaves get like blisters on them and then they eventually dry up and die and so on and so on so this plant is very very susceptible to that so I don't recommend growing this in a greenhouse this is strictly a field type of tomato and they need to be grown outdoors uh, you can see over here how big some of the leaves can actually get see how big that is another thing I want to point out about this tomato variety is that it has a very very unique lemony citrusy type of uh, odor to it doesn't smell or anything like a tomato plant it has like a very citrusy type of smell very different than what you normally smell and if you brush against this as you walk by it'll release a whole lot of that odor it'll, you'll really smell it very strong just rubbing against it so this plant has a very strong uh, scent to it which is pleasant it's not bad but it definitely different than a standard tomato um, I also want to show you the flower now these flowers have already been pollinated so you'll see the centers get brown on them and then they either fall and have a tomato or they will not have a tomato now I'm looking for one without the center now all of them seem to be brown like that so maybe that is the Maybe the center of the tomato flower is brown, but I've seen these without them brown on them. When they first come out, they're not brown. I don't. I don't believe so. All these, all these. Uh, see, like this one here is isn't fully brown yet. That means that when they're brown like that, means the, the flower is already pollinated. They're done. They're going to drop that flower, and the tomato is going to come out. So this plant is literally producing thousands of tomatoes. Literally thousands, not hundreds, thousands. There's, you can't see it, but underneath this canopy, there are tons of tomato bracts like that filling up with tomatoes. And getting to those is probably next to impossible. So I'll probably have to pick them up at the end of the year and uh, scoop them up so I could get seeds. I do want to show you what the seeds look like to this because they do not look like regular tomato seeds. And I just want to make sure you're aware of that. So if you do get you know you do buy seeds you understand that these are not regular tomato seeds and these seeds are going to be a little bit more of a challenge to deal with but you just got to be very careful because they're very very small and very light they can blow away very easily in a wind so I'm not even sure how I'm going to be collecting seeds on this yet and and you know fermenting them and processing them. I'm not really sure because they're such a small seed and processing them may have to be a little different of a process. So I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'll shoot a video on that. Maybe I won't. Let me show you some of the tomatoes. Now, I got a few of these plants growing around here. And this one's about the healthiest one of them all. And all the other ones seem to be getting blight. Now, this one's just... Where are you? Somewhere over there. This one's just starting to get blight in here. You're seeing the leaves are... It's a type of blight. I don't know if it's early blight, late blight. I'm not sure what type it is, but this plant is susceptible to blight, and it does get it eventually. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to just keep that in mind. Some wilder tomato plants are highly um, 
resistant to blights. This one is not one of those plants. This one will get it, as I'll show you in the back, one of my plants going back there, that this plant can get blight. So it's a very good per per tomato producer. It makes quite a bit of tomatoes, and I recommend you do not grow this in your regular garden. You have to find an area of your yard where you can dedicate maybe a 20 foot by 20 foot patch, grow the plant roughly in the middle of it and let it branch and sprawl out and it'll take up that whole 20 by 20 patch and literally fill it up with hundreds of these tomatoes. Now we are gonna do a tomato review on this and you're not, well, I'm gonna have to add it to this video because I don't believe these tomatoes are ready. They take a very long time to ripen and come to fruition, if you will. So. We're going to have to just, uh, you'll see it on one video, but I'm going to have to wait until these tomatoes are ready so I can do a taste test on them. I did taste one, and they are a little bit on a different side, but I'm not going to spoil the fun for you. I'll wait till you watch the end of the video where the tomato review will be. I also want to point out, too, if this plant is in direct sunlight on a regular basis, uh, they will get some purpling in the stems. So it's not very common, but it does get some purpling in it. Now, let me just show you one or two of the other plants I got growing. So over here is another plant. As you can see, it's taken up the whole top of my greenhouse. This plant is, you can see it's really suffering really badly from edema. And again, the edema is the ability for the plant to transpirate as opposed to how much water it's taking up. And it's not, it's taking up more water than it can transpirate. And that's why we're seeing this problem. Now, is it a disease? No, it's a condition. And part of that, cause of that symptom of that condition is just not simply enough airflow around it and the type of light that's hitting it is causing it to want to become edemic like this or edemic if you want to call it that so that is some, definitely something you're going to want to consider i do not recommend growing this indoors and i also don't recommend growing it even in a greenhouse this needs to grow outside in full sun full weather with air blowing around it it's just this particular variety of tomato is just the way it grows. Now, here's a look at some of the tomatoes. Give you a quick look at those, an early look at them. Until the end of the video, we will be doing a taste test on some of what you see here. Not sure how clear that's coming in. Okay, so that's what they look like. And if you look closely, you can see that there's little hairs coming straight up off the surface of that. Not sure if my camera's picking that up. When I do the, when I do the bench test, when I get on the bench and I do the review on it, I'll try to get a black background with better lighting so you can actually see the hairs. I want you to be able to see that because there are hairs on They're not sharp. They're not like cactus hairs, but there are little hairs on it. Got another plant growing roughly in here. Here's another plant growing. And this one's... Uh, well, this one's a regular pimp. That one's a different one. That one's not a pimp. And let's see. Let me bring you around. I got these growing all over the place. I want to make sure we get a good supply of seed for this. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to grow this next year or not. So, here's another one. I got it. It was a cutting from that I took from the big one. And I potted it, grew it, and it, it rooted very easily. And as you can see, it's grown. And it's also growing out this way. You know, as you can see, some of the lower stems are... This is a very bushy type of plant. This plant really likes to uh, sprawl out sideways. It really likes that. It doesn't like to grow straight up. It likes to sprawl. So let's take you over outdoors to this one. Now, this one got hit really hard with blight. In fact... All my tomato plants got hit with blight, including this one, and this one is just as susceptible to blight as any other tomato, and it did show signs of blight. Though, I will say its resistance towards blight and its way of outgrowing it and handling blight is a little bit different than, say, some of my other tomatoes that are wiped out completely. This one seems to be taking it pretty good, and uh, it's still growing. It's not dying. It just wants to keep going and producing more and more tomatoes. There are tomatoes out here. I did knock a lot of them off trying to get through here, which is really my own fault. I, even three feet apart is not far enough for me in my, when I grow tomatoes because they just literally take over everything. 
Uh, this is a mistake. Don't grow your tomatoes in your, this tomato in your tomato garden because this is why. As you can see, I can't even get in here because of it. And it really takes up a lot of room. Let's see, you might be able to see some of those hairs on here in the light. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up. But you might be able to see some of those hairs on it. It's why they call it the hairy tomato. Now, there are two versions of this tomato. There's uh, this version, which you see here, and then there's another version of this tomato, and that is a fully hairy tomato where the entire uh, leaf is fuzzy and hairy, like a pubescence. It has like a pubescence all over the plant, and that's another variety. This is a different variety, so I only have this variety that I'm growing now, but there are two varieties of the wild hairy tomato. And this is the non-hairy plant form of it. The other one is a hairy plant. And I believe the fruits are a little bigger on the other variety. Whereas these fruits are about what you see here. They're about one and a half, they're about one and a half times the size of a current tomato. So that's it. We're going to do a uh, taste test in about a week or so. So I'll bring you right back to this video. And uh, we'll go from there.